Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Nurse, and uh, thank you for this kind introduction. The gracious welcome at Rockefeller University. I should tell you that as we speak, I raced over here and uh, apologized for being a bit tardy in that I was belatedly assigned to do a story I could not have anticipated, a story about royal weddings. <laughs> I don't know why I was the best person suited to do that story. As someone suggested it's because I was the only one who knew about the last royal wedding and uh, had known Princess Diana and others, but somehow I was uh, commissioned to do that. Since they knew I was in New York today, I was an easy target. So I had come here for you, but I ended up being uh, deployed otherwise for NBC Nightly News, and so I apologize. Plus, doing my regular program today, which included uh, information from the Senate Republicans that they are not going to permit ratification of the START Treaty before the end of this session uh, at the end of the year. So there, there have been a number of developments on a lot of fronts today, and uh, the conviction at the ethics trial of Charlie Rango on all counts. So we've had a busy news day. I'm very pleased to be here uh, among some friends whom I see in the audience. I've uh, heard so much about Rockefeller University over the years from my friends and colleagues on other boards. And so it's a great honor for me to be here, and especially to thank, of course, all of the members of the Perlmeister Green Guard Prize Selection Committee for inviting me, and offer my own congratulations, of course, to Drs. Janet Rowley and Mary Claire King. I was so moved by Dr. Greengard's uh, description as to why he wanted to honor uh, women scientists in this fashion, not only his personal story, which is profound, but the experiences of women scientists. And when first asked, I said, well, why should I uh, come from my rather prosaic academic uh, background, not having my uh, PhD or medical degree or advanced degrees, but being just a, a humble journalist, come amidst all of you and scientists and uh, other renowned scholars to speak about my experiences in journalism. I thought that I had to study uh, and come up with, with something you know, much more elegant for all of you. And I was assured that uh, by Dr. Nurse and his colleagues that you really did want to know what it was like to break into a field that did not permit women in the newsroom. So, let me share with you what happened when I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 1967. Uh, thinking that I was going to go on to Cambridge and, and uh, do my degree and become an English professor, but having heard music down the corridor of the student union and being a, a violinist manque, I followed my ears to the college radio station, which was a classical music station, and volunteered to program a chamber music program, and then got dragooned into covering some news stories, and in 1964 had the experience as an undergraduate of interviewing a presidential candidate on the campus, Barry Goldwater. And I just got the bug. I had always written stories for my high school newspaper and, and for the hometown paper, but the idea that I was actually interviewing a presidential candidate and writing a story and broadcasting it and then uh, getting involved in the Ivy League radio network broadcasting the coverage of the Senate races that year at Rockefeller Center and found that I had been assigned to a room as Andrew Mitchell with a Yale undergraduate because then all male, their school because it didn't occur to anyone coming to the Ivy League radio network that a woman would have been involved. And ended up running the college station and thought I was a big deal until I tried to get a job in the profession because I thought that summer that I graduated that perhaps um, there was more to life than getting my English literature degree. And they said, we will hire you, but you have to go into advertising or promotion. We can't have a woman in the newsroom. We've never had a woman in the newsroom. This is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1967. Not some small market somewhere uh, in the countryside. And they'd never had a woman, and they were not about to. So the, the compromise was that they would hire me as a copy boy, 
which was my title, <laughs> and that I would rip wire copy and run coffee for the anchor men, and would do it between midnight and eight, but would make sure that I got out of there in the morning before the newsroom became filled with, with the grown-ups. So as long as I wasn't noticed and was just ripping wire copy in the middle of the night, with the exception of the Philadelphia policemen who stopped me as I walked through Rittenhouse Square because they couldn't understand what a woman was doing in the middle of the night running th or walking through Rittenhouse Square. So they used to stop me occasionally and just make sure that I was um, not a woman of the night, just a, <laughs> just a night worker. And that's how this crazy career started. And I have had amazing adventures. Um, along the way, women have, of course, become much more numerous, numerous in my profession. And I consider it an obligation and a joy to have brought many young women in as researchers and interns and producers. And they are now salted. It's my own little network of women throughout uh, our White House producers and diplomatic producers in London bureaus, and uh, I've got wonderful colleagues who've worked with me throughout our network and in other networks as well. But there still are issues. Just this weekend, um, just between you and me, as someone once said on the air, um, <laughs> just this weekend, I got a very upset email from a friend of mine who had uh, had a mastectomy and reconstruction surgery here at Memorial. And she and several other women who'd gone through National Reagan National Airport with the new body scanners had had difficulties with the scanners not correctly identifying the implants, and then were subjected to very uncomfortable pat-downs and you know, quite a bit of humiliation and uh, distress. And so I messaged my colleagues, all the male producers of the various programs, and suggested that since we were doing stories on problems with the TSA procedures, that this was yet another example of the lack of sophistication and um, sensitivity of the procedures. and. Um, I'm still waiting for that angle story to be pursued, but I did it on my own program. That's one of the, the joys of having my own hour every day to pursue whatever interests me within limits.